I'm just going to do a short video about how I'm going to do rigging on this kayak and also how I'm going to pad it inside. Uh, but first I just want to show you the kayak. I just finished this one and part of the experiment in this kayak was a new boat varnish. It's Coelan. I mentioned it earlier. It's a German uh, one part uh, varnish and this is the the matte, the silk matte um, type. It comes in a gloss type also and I'm gonna sell it in my shop very soon. Um, the video will be about how to do these thick ropes, uh, bungee and um, different other stuff. But, but first of all, I'm really curious to just know how this kayak performs. I've never tested it yet, so I took it down to the water today just to, to give it a, a, a spin. The test paddle went well, so I'm really excited to get this finished now. And um, there's just two little things I need to do now to be able to do all the rigging tomorrow. And um, one thing is uh, bungee. A lot of people want bungee on their kayaks and that's fine, it's very practical. I could just, like I did for the rigging here, drill holes through the gunnel and then tie bungee inside the kayak. The only problem is bungee gets um, more uh, slack when it's uh, getting old and uh, therefore I think it could be wise to just do some little um, points here on the deck where you can tie the bungee to. I've tested out different options over the years and this is one of them. A little buckle made out of plastic. You can have them out of metal also and you can screw it into the wood. But it kind of looks it's big. So I have another suggestion here that's more discreet. As you can see, I want a little piece of cord here. So I'm just drilling holes all the way through the fabric. And um, I've already mixed some epoxy. And I want this epoxy to just soak in. It's just a braided like polyester cord and um, I can just dip the ends of that in the epoxy and then I have this all which is kind of old and not too sharp anymore. It's kind of blunt that allows me to just push. Oh, I guess this is it. And um, some people will have like a string along the gunnel and uh, this is just a perfect loop for, for attaching a string that goes along the kayak. So you can make several of these if, if you want to. Another preparation for tomorrow I want to show you is my hemp rope here. I think hemp is really beautiful and natural. The only disadvantage with the hemp is that over time it will rot. So if you're not keen on, on uh, shifting your rope uh, every year, then you should do what I do now. So this is just some regular varnish. So I pour a little bit of the varnish into the bag. And I close the bag and let the varnish soak into the rope. It's well soaked now and I just pull it through my fingers. That way I squeeze out extra varnish. And I also make sure to, if there are dry spots somewhere on the rope, I'm making sure that it's evenly distributed all over the rope. So now I'm gonna take it out. It's nice and sunny outside, so I'm gonna take it out, hang it out to dry in the sun, and it will be ready to 
do the rigging job tomorrow. Now we're back again. The rope is dry and I'm ready to do the rigging. Uh, I just came up with this idea that I want to show you what this is actually meant for because I just figured out many of you may not know that. I can't say that this is my invention because this is the way the Greenlanders would rig their kayaks in the old days. So a cup of ropes, this is about 15 centimeters distance. The space here is about eight. So you actually nearly half the ropes. And uh, they need to have a little bit of um, slack. They need to be pretty loose. And when you pull the toggles apart, then you tighten the rope. And uh, this was originally meant for holding your hunting gear in place. I think it's super convenient for one single purpose and that is when I accidentally get out of my kayak and needs to get climbed back into my kayak again, I can use this along with my paddle or maybe even my spare paddle as well as an outrigger. Um, <clears throat> so what I do is I just slide it under the toggles. They are, by the way, always to kept together. So they're ready for use. So I stick in my paddle and I just pull them apart. And I can do this in all sorts of conditions. And it really helps me to, to climb back into my kayak safely and it works. So, and if I want to be super safe, I want to, I can do another one on the other side with my spare paddle. Earlier today, I made these toggles ready, so they can be made out of any wood, but I prefer to use some really hard wood, so I don't need to, to worry about them splintering and uh, having to replace them later. So this is some super hard wood. I got the rope and I made a little uh, pointy end here with a piece of tape. And uh, here comes the really hard part is when you want to stab your kayak. Like this. On the other end of the rope, naturally, I just do a little knot like this. And I see if I can get rope sticking out. Oops. I need to work fast because the fibers, even though they are varnished, were still close together. That's a good thing. And I just pull it hard to tighten the knot. Find the nicest side, make that the upside. And I do repeat. Gunnel, by the way, is eight millimeters. And if I had it thinner, then I think I would need a thinner rope as well.
need and use these pliers. I varnished the rope yesterday, but it's still a little bit sticky. So, this is the last thing I do, I tie a knot and I just move the knot forward as close to the gunnel as I can get it. There I go, and now I tighten the rope and get some extra rope that way. And I just spread it out so that it gets kind of the same and I cut off end with my knife. That's a little bit scary. So now I got my ropes in front and back. I could just put some varnish in this spot, or I could put a little wedge there to make it super tight. I want to make one here and show it to you. This is just a piece of pine and it's eight millimeters wide, but you can use whatever little piece of scrap wood you have. The point is you need a flat side and it needs to be pointy, like cone shaped, so that you can stick the, the pointy part underneath the rope. Hammer it in just a little bit. Take a saw. Cut it off and then hammer in the rest. And this point can then again be varnished and you're absolutely certain there will never be any water leaking inside your kayak through this hole. Now that was the solid rope and the toggles which is my, like my main rigging. And now comes this little thing I prepared for yesterday. So it's, all, it's super solid now, the epoxy has hardened. And um, what I thought of using this one for was my GoPro mount. So it's the right distance from the cockpit. So now I can video myself rolling. I promised you a few more tips and tricks and I'm going to do this real easy. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because you need to do a lot of like individual testing of the foam you can put inside the kayak. But I've prepared some parts now just to show you, give you some ideas of what you can do. And mainly when you do rolling um, practice, you want to sit tight in your kayak so you can benefit from having a little bit of padding on the sides here. And um, I just cut out some foam blocks I did this on my bandsaw, but this is a brilliant tool, like a regular bread knife. It's just perfect for all kinds of shaping. Well, I cut a piece that will fit in here, exactly here is where I'm seated. So it will sit on my hips. And uh, I cut out, um, I made a cut here and a cut here and left some extra material here and that way, I can just squeeze it in here under the ribs and there it says 
and I will have some extra padding on my my knees and uh, my thighs here. So that's one option. Really easy to do. Just cut out with your bread knife. Other side as well. I love the sound of this. Huh? That's it. And I can just squeeze it in here as I did. So, but fitting your kayak with foam like this is a lot of work. So I need to get in and out and in and out. I may need the knife and just cut out a little more. Or I may need a little bigger piece and that takes time. But this is just a thing to show you. The other big thing about rolling is leaning back. This is, can be quite painful, so I like to have a little piece of foam to pad the cockpit back. Um, I cut out this piece earlier and it has the height from the top of the keel and to the top of the, of the cockpit combing. And um, I also made some little cuts here and here and now I wanted to try to cut out so that part of this mm -hmm. that sound part of this will stick up and cover my back. Almost. So. And as you can see, the foam I'm using it's five centimeters wide. It's real quality, close cell foam. I sell it in my shop, and. Um, if you have some other sizes available, it's good. But uh, this is this is good size. If I want a thicker one, I can just glue two pieces together with contact cement, or I can sew them together with with a screwdriver and some thread. But I think for me now, one layer is good. You see, it sits really tight here. Oops. It sits really tight here and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off little by little and I try to lean back because the idea is that it will just make my, my back bent backwards in a more gentle way. So the height here remains so I won't get the heart wood on my back and then I just round it off a little bit. But what I should do now is get into the kayak, try to sit in it, lean back, etc. Maybe make one more. I don't know. Now as you may know already I like to use the seesaw. So all this foam goes under the sock and that also keeps it in place so the sock helps to keep the, the foam in place right but of course when I'm testing this I won't be using the sock I'll test it without the sock but when I'm getting close to finished I'll try the sock in and see how that feels so now with the foam mattress inside, which I always carry because it makes the sea sock stay there and it prevents the sea sock from collapsing. And it's kind of um, nice to sit on and it insulates, the water's cold. So um, 
Now that folds up a little bit on my thighs now, so I think this should be good. But of course, next thing is I'm gonna go and test it. So that will be the next clip from here.